have you seen this one that's coming in at Sky for the quad yeah. bike incident? What is the address of your emergency? Kyle Rea on Sky. Kyle Rea on Sky? Yeah. And I'm underneath my quad bike and I've lost my arm. I need a helicopter. Right. It's inaccessible. I'm going to find you by your phone location. Listening in, technical learning that this patient is on his own, stuck up a hillside in the middle of nowhere with a vehicle on top of him. This is a very high chance of being a life threatening injury. When we're dispatched to a job, we'll be given a limited amount of information. As doctors, we start off with worst case scenarios in our head and then work back from there. But situations like this, and there's every chance the patient may be bleeding to death. You, are you falling asleep? I'm passing out. Right, you need to stay with me. Stay with me and take deep breaths. You're OK. We're coming to get you. Landing on uneven ground, the helicopter can only drop consultant Neil and Registrar James close by. Seeing someone on a hillside is no comparison to seeing them in a nice, warm, well-lit resuscitation room B, where you have lots of space, there's lots of kit that we have around us, people to come and give us a hand on tap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. Do you want to do an initial assessment, James? The left arm is completely trapped. He is tender on the left rib cage. He is a little chilly in the hand. In trap side hours, it's since 11 o'clock. BP drop. <laughs> it just means if we yeah. have to do something. Yeah. When we release him, there is a chance of bleeding, definitely. Yeah. So I think significant hemorrhage is unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a hemorrhage, we need to stop it. OK. Bleeding's our main worry. Hemorrhage is the number one enemy in trauma. When trauma patients die, by and large, it's from hemorrhage. This is Trauma Team Leader with an update. Uh, we now have the quad bike secured and are shortly to lift it, although we are watchful for hemorrhage or further injury when he is released. I hope it's not amputated. But it's five hours lying trapped under a quad bike, so time is key. Would you want to stand back and kind of coordinate the movements yeah, a bit? Absolutely. And I'll get in with John doing yeah. the hemorrhage. We have that unpredictability when we're coming up to releasing a patient. I think every clinician's worst nightmare is making something worse rather than better. Everyone ready? Hello. Yeah, I see. There you go. Yeah, go for it, Carl. Right, these should take away. Yeah, right, okay. Slowly, just slowly. Just slowly. <laughs> Okay, that arm can go across there. So we'll get over and get that stabilised. Let's get over there. Cool. Well done, Ewan. Good man. Right, Ewan. Yep. Ready, brace, move. And back. One, two, three. Take big, deep breaths, Ewan, all right? There's Neil Hughes on Sky. He's now been released and we will be with you at about 6.50. OK, we're going to slide a one, two, three. All right, if you want me, squeeze my hand. I'll hold your hand, all right? Hi, Amy. Can I activate the helipad, please? You've got heli five coming in. If we bring the skills right at the roadside, right at the hillside, we can then get the patient's journey started earlier. And actually, if you do that well, you see that when you take a patient into the hospital. It's like they've jumped forward an hour into the hospital journey. And actually, everything happens much quicker. When I was up there by myself, I kind of thought I was a goner. But I'm still alive. 
ended up, all the nerve endings have stopped working. So yeah, it's going to be a long-term rehabilitation. I'd like to thank every single emergency service once I'm fit and healthy again.